They say it's about black liberation. And that's why they're obsessed with race. killing cops now and Soros is funding it. Yeah, Soros is funding the whole thing. They're now trying to say, oh, that's debunked. Meanwhile, this debunked. sheriff says that we want to kill cops, basically. Yeah, while it's all, you know, the dangerous right-wing conservatives, the Tea Party, never being involved in any act of violence. And these people are literally chanting, what do we want? Dead cops, when do we want it now? The NYPD cop killer, Ishmael Brinsley, said that was a revenge attack for Black Lives Matter. Now we have the incident yesterday. This in turn creates more Dylan Roofs, and the whole cycle goes round and round. Then the government comes in with the control, with the new powers. That's why it's in their interest to fuel the flames of this race war. To distract us from the fact that foreign banks are looting everything right now, Paul. Yeah, it's, it's a massive distraction, again, to get us fighting with each other. And the very leaders, the de facto leader of Black Lives Matter came out within minutes of the news breaking of yesterday's shooting, before the identity of the shooter was even known, blamed it on white people. Time magazine, in defense of rioting, you know, Salon said. That's right. You should do a story on called. how Time Magazine called for killing people and is responsible. Because more than anything, they are now. And it's important to point out that it's incredible, Paul. It's totally sick. Great job. Infowars.com. We'll be back with our reporters. Alex Jones here back live into the second hour. Our reporters, Joe Biggs and, of course, David Knight, are reporting live from the site of yesterday's tragic shooting. WDBJ in Mineta, Virginia, and former Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs is there uh, first up to tell us what happened since they got in last night, what's happening with the press conferences. Uh, they're going to be covering the media response to this, Hillary calling for more gun control, uh, the father of the news reporter calling for that. Uh, simply uh, ridiculous. Uh, very, very sad that this is now being used to try to disarm other innocent people that had nothing to do with this, but uh, giving us the latest from the ground is Joe Biggs. Joe? Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now I'm standing right across the street from the Bridgewater Plaza. Now over to my left, over here we'll pan across. This is the actual location where uh, Flanagan came in and shot the two journalists. We still have another person critically injured in the hospital. Now today at 5 o'clock our time here on East Coast Standard Time, we're going to have a press conference right over here across the street. They're going to actually bring us over and let us walk around, talk, ask questions. And I've got a few questions I'm, I'm going to ask, too, as well. So we're prepared for that. But one of the things that we know today is they found the LGBT flag in Flanagan's apartment. So what this means is, is since he has the flag, that means he represents all gay, lesbian people. So I think he speaks for them all. It's a hate flag now. I think we should call for a, a full-out ban on that flag, just like they did in Charleston, Alex. I agree, uh, because the Confederate battle flag, Robert E. Lee flag, was there. Historically, it has nothing to do uh, with uh, oppressing black people, even though they say it does. Uh, let's ban uh, the rainbow flag now, and let's ban the Confederate flag. And then if somebody's wearing a Coca-Cola shirt when they kill somebody, I want Coca-Cola banned. And if somebody runs over somebody in a Ford F-150 on purpose, ban Ford, because it well, is the fault of Ford. That's a great idea. I mean, since he is a, a black homosexual, or he was. All right, our Skype has now broken up, uh, but we will uh, go back. Okay, Joe, go ahead and finish up the point. Check, check. Uh, you're back. Go ahead. All right. I said, well, since he was a, uh, you know, an African-American homosexual, I think we should hold everybody responsible for this because his one, his lone actions represent everyone across the full spectrum of the LGB, uh, LGBT community and the black community. So, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of pay now for this. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, everyone's talking about a gun. You've got the Clinton people coming out saying we need to uh, ban the guns. You've got the governor here in Virginia saying they need to stricter gun background checks. When, in fact, we know now that uh, Flanagan went through the proper procedures, got the gun two days after the Charleston shooting. This was premeditated. This guy went through the uh, background check. So we don't need to call for more background checks. They're already in place. This was a lone man, one guy who was pushed over the edge. He was mentally unstable. He didn't know how to react to uh, these so-called rumors from these reporters saying that they made racist comments. And instead of doing like most people do, anyone in, this, anyone in their lifetime has come across some kind of racist uh, comment they've heard of. You know what you do? You do like I've done before and other of my friends have done. You brush it off and move on. Instead, this guy decided to cross the line of no turning back, and he decided to go out and commit murder. 
You don't blame a gun. You don't blame an object. I can lay a gun down right now in the middle of the street and cars will drive by. People will walk by and not one person will be. That's right. But, but expanding on that while your Skype breaks up, Joe Beggs, it's very, very simple. This is what totalitarianism does is it blames whole groups of people for the actions of one person. And as soon as we learned this guy was black, we didn't start blaming all black people for it like a lot of black groups did and the left did. This is their guilt-based uh, mindset. And we had the guy, because of the Southern Poverty Law Center, he admitted it, go in and shoot up uh, Dr. Dobson's facility, focus on the family. Uh, the truth is the left is very, very violent, and they are pushing with Time Magazine saying the case for rioting and Black Lives Matter groups calling for violence. The truth is, though, as a group, they've been pushing violence. And that's the problem. And I really wonder when Nancy Pelosi is in control of the D.C.-based Black Lives Matter with her staffer, why would they be pushing this? What do they think they're going to get out of it? Well, I don't get it. I confronted uh, DeRay McKesson, the guy that's the so-called head of the Black Lives Matter group in Ferguson this last time. And I said, how are you going to fight racism by creating more racism? And he told me to get away and adjust my white privilege. You know, the guy is out of control. That's what they push. You know, when I sit down in these different places and I engage in conversation and everyone praises these guys like they're the new Martin Luther Kings, that's, I, I just don't see it. These guys, the guys at the top of this movement, are pushing racism and they're, somehow that's going to defeat the racism against them. All they're doing is creating more. It's out of control. Well, that, makes, we business, that makes business better for them. Now, I want to talk about what you've witnessed since you got there. Then we're going to uh, switch here in a minute and get David Knight's. Uh, breakdown on what's happening, and then tell us what's coming up as well. Well, what we've seen so far is you have the uh, the whole area has been blockaded off. There's police up and down the road. They're not letting anybody over in that area right now, except for essential people who are working in some of the smaller businesses over here. This is a really small little lake town, nice area, a main road that comes through here. Uh, there's a good bit of media that's uh, behind us right now. You know, mo most of these people are going to be pushing how there should be stricter gun control. You have the uh, victim's father, the female reporter, coming out saying that he's going to work tirelessly to make sure there's a more stricter gun control. And that's the thing. That's what I want to do. Later on, there's going to be a press conference, and I'm going to ask if that gun has been charged with murder. Because, I mean, really, that's that's what it is. We're blaming the guns. We're not going to blame the individual. Oh, yeah, I think, so the, I think the gun should be charged with first-degree murder. In fact, yeah, it, it also pressured and brainwashed the shooter into doing it. Well, I want to I want to talk to these mainstream reporters too when they're live. Once we go live, and tell them how dare them, shame on them for taking this senseless act of violence by one person and you it to push their anti-gun agenda. Absolutely, why Joe. Should, why, I should want law, you... why should law-abiding citizens have to give up our rights to protect ourselves so these cowards can hide behind? Well, you're absolutely on target, uh, Joe Biggs. We're going to come back to you in a little while. I want to disconnect and reconnect the Skype see if we can get a better connection, and then we're going to bring uh, David Knight on and then bring Joe Biggs back. You can tell Joe is really hot under the collar. We're going to have a bunch of HD reports filed. We're going to be covering the press conferences. Uh, that's why they're there. This is two hours from any major airport. The guys left at like 4 o'clock yesterday, got into Virginia at about 7, and then it took them to like 10 at night to get out there. Uh, it's in the middle of nowhere, beautiful area. And it, it, it's a tragedy. But, I mean, I'm more upset about 300,000 dead Syrians killed by al-Qaeda and ISIS than our government funded. Hillary was instrumental in running all that. She wants to say she's upset, she's so sad for these two dead people. She could care less. This is a cold-blooded killer. Fast and furious, all of it. And they're just using these events to push their agenda. And I know everybody knows that. But obviously not everybody, because some people still buy into this bull. But the good news is uh, most people I talk to and what I see happening online and what gun sales show and national statistics, gun ownership is only rising. People are getting into guns, whether it's for self-defense, whether it's for recreation. It's really an exciting time to be alive, and that's why they're pushing so hard. But clearly, they've overdone it and really played their hand, and that's why they're having more and more trouble. All right, do we have the guys back? Okay, we're getting them back, and then we're going to get David Knight's 
uh, breakdown on all of this as well. And this is live radio slash TV. I know we have affiliates all over the country on AM and FM radio, and people are like, is this a TV show? Yes, it's radio-based, but we added television to it 10 years ago or more so that we could document what we were saying more. Because I would have reporters 10 years ago or 12 years ago on the ground reporting by phone. People say, oh, that person wasn't really there during that urban warfare drill. And we'd have to put the video online. YouTube came along and, let, and started letting us you know, add even more. Because I was putting videos up 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago online, but they were on my servers. And I couldn't afford it. So that was a big, big problem there. Uh, but now as bandwidth's gone down, it's opened things up to allow us to build a real media platform. Uh, David Knight, uh, again, joining us from right outside the small town Virginia WDBJ uh, Center, News Center. We're going to skip this network break to have more time. Steve Quell's coming up. Uh, David Knight, tell us what you've seen so far, observations, and what's coming up today. Yeah, there must be so much media there that you're able to get an internet connection, but it's not able to stay up. Because I guarantee you that town is not used to the extra 500 people that are there uh, covering this. So we'll, we'll try to reconnect with that yet again, or maybe use another Skype handle. And again, this is all part of what live radio slash TV is, uh, teleprompter free, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we go any further, we can also just default get David Knight on telephone. Uh, I want to remind you that this hour is brought to you by Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. X2 is unlike any other nascent iodine uh, out there. It comes from a deep earth uh, crystal source, and it goes in and basically blocks the bad halogens. And it's able, in, in my experience, to really detoxify the body. You die without iodine. There is such a huge epidemic of iodine deficiency all over the world. Most iodine is bound to other elements that you'll find so you don't really absorb it or it makes you sick. Experience real iodine in our quest to find the most powerful alternative uh, products, uh, nutraceuticals, we developed X2 and that's why it's such a sensation and helps finance this very expensive operation. So it's a win-win when you purchase Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. Let's look at a few reviews. Daniel in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, said that uh, himself and his whole family take this daily. Works great. Would recommend it to a friend. Five-star review. Thank you for your support. Sylvia in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada says, I use this product for two days and already feel better and more energized. My whole body feels lighter and more relaxed. Just love it as it gave me instant results. It is extremely easy to take and the taste is great. Thank you for providing us with such a great product. God bless. It's like when you're pushed underwater and you finally get to the top and get air. I mean, when you regularly have air and aren't underwater, you don't realize how much you miss it. Some people don't have deficiencies. If you eat enough seafood, things like that. So if you get it, it won't be that big of a deal. But if you do have a deficiency, which they say like half the public does, it is dramatic. Warning, though, within two, three, four weeks, you'll have a detox. And you'll feel pretty crappy for four or five days. And then after that, it feels even better, and all this stuff will come out of your skin. In most people's experience, I mean, it is dramatic when you slough the bad halogens out of your thyroid and things. So, again, Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2 available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 1-888-253-3139. And we have the highest quality water filters they cut out the glyphosates and cut out uh, the fluoride and all the rest of it at InfoWarsStore.com. We have the non-GMO seeds, the high-quality shortwave radios, the best survival cook stoves, the highest-quality storable foods that are vetted, uh, just all the best products, over 500 of them. Uh, we've got some of the best survival watches, the, uh, some of the best optics recommended by special forces, all of it at InfoWarsStore.com. That's the umbrella site then has the subsection, InfoWarsLife.com. Now, let's go ahead and go back to David Knight. Let's go back to David Knight, who is outside WDBJ in Mineta, 
Virginia, the site of the tragic shooting, the, quote, revenge race murder, bitter black reporter who gunned down